in a small serene village lived a beautiful young woman named Zawadi. She was the pride of her mother, known for her striking beauty with deep brown skin that gleamed in the sun and bright inquisitive eyes that held dreams of a better future. At 25 years old, Zawadi's life had taken a turn that no one in her village could have ever imagined. Zawadi's journey began after she completed her high school. Her uncle and aunt, who lived in the bustling city, visited the village. They promised her old mother that they would help Zawadi further her studies and find a job in the city. With sadness and hope in her heart, Zawadi hugged her old mother and younger sister goodbye, and she left her humble home and joined her uncle and aunt in the city, believing she was on her way to fulfilling her dreams. However, life in the city was not as rosy as she had imagined. Her aunt and uncle turned out to be harsh and uncaring. Instead of enrolling her in school or helping her find a job, they used her as a maid, making her do all the house chores while their daughter lived a life of ease. Zawadi was often starved, mistreated and belittled. The city that had promised so much now felt like a prison and the dreams she had nurtured for so long seemed to fade with each passing day. One fateful night, Zawadi's life took an even darker turn. Her cousin, a spoiled and cunning girl, stole a large sum of money from her parents and cunningly framed Zawadi for the theft. Without a second thought, her aunt and uncle threw Zawadi out of their house in the dead of the night. With nowhere to go, Zawadi wandered the cold streets of the city, heartbroken and hopeless. That night, Zawadi faced the harsh reality of the cruel city. Her clothes, which were her only possessions, were stolen and she was abused by some young men. She was heartbroken and very bitter. As dawn broke, Zawadi found herself sleeping outside a local cafe. She was lucky as she was recognized by an old friend from the village called Njera. Njera had also moved to the city, but unlike Zawadi, she seemed to be thriving, dressed in fine clothes and radiating confidence. Seeing Zawadi's despair, Njera invited her to stay at her apartment and offered to help her get back on her feet. Over the next few days, Njira told Zawadi about a group she had joined, a secretive, exclusive society that promised wealth and power. Njira had joined the cult after struggling in the city herself, and now she was reaping the rewards. She explained that the path to riches required certain sacrifices, but in return, members were rewarded with unimaginable wealth. Desperate and disillusioned, Zawadi agreed to attend one of the cult's gatherings. The meeting was held in a lavish mansion on the outskirts of the city. The atmosphere was thick with incense and the murmured chants of other members. Zawadi was introduced to the cult leader charismatic woman who promised her a life of luxury beyond her wildest dreams. But there was a price. In exchange for wealth, Zawadi had to give herself to the cult's cause. She was tasked with seducing men, draining their vitality and rendering them infertile. Each man she ensnared would bring her more riches. At first, Zawadi was hesitant, but the allure of wealth and the promise of a better life were too strong to resist. 
she took the plunge. And as the months passed, she rose in the ranks of the cult. She became wealthy beyond measure, driving the latest luxury cars, living in a sprawling mansion, and adorned in the finest clothes and jewelry. Her transformation was remarkable, but it came at a great cost. One of the cult's strictest rules was that the members were forbidden from helping their families with their newfound wealth. This rule tormented Zawadi. Despite her riches, she was not allowed to share even a single shilling with her mother and sister, who still toiled in the village fields. The thought of her mother and sister struggling while she lived in opulence filled her with deep sorrow. She knew that they had no one else to help them, as ever since their father passed on, her father's brothers mistreated them very much and took away her father's lands. Zawadi would visit her mother and sister from time to time, but she never revealed her wealth to them. She would arrive dressed modestly, driving an old dusty car she kept specifically for this visit. Her mother, still proud of her daughter, never suspected the life she was living in the city. They believed she was still struggling to make ends meet. Each time Zawadi returned to her mansion, after visiting her mother and sister, she would cry herself to sleep, haunted by the choices she had made. The wealth that had once seemed like a blessing now felt like a curse, and the loneliness that accompanied it was unbearable. The weight of her secret grew heavier with each passing day, but she knew there was no way out. Zawadi's life, though filled with material riches, was devoid of true happiness. She had gained the world, but lost her soul in the process. The wealth that she had once desired so desperately had come at a price far greater than she had ever imagined. The beautiful young woman who had once dreamed of a better life now lived in a cage, a prisoner of her own choices, longing for the simplicity and love she had left behind. One afternoon, as Zawadi sat in her luxurious mansion, staring blankly at the sparkling chandeliers that once filled her with pride, her phone rang. It was her younger sister, Amani. She hadn't heard from her in a while, and the unexpected call sent a shiver down her spine. Zawadi, Mama is very sick. Amani's voice trembled. She fainted today while working in the field, and we need to take her to the hospital. But we don't have enough money. Please, could you send us something? Zawadi's heart sank. Her mother, the woman who had sacrificed so much for her, was sick. And here she was, surrounded by wealth, yet unable to help. I'll, I'll, I'll try, Amani. Zawadi stammered, her voice cracking. Let, let me see what I can do. After hanging up, Zawadi's hands shook as she clutched her phone. Her mother needed her. Her family needed her. But Njira's words echoed in her mind like a haunting refrain. You cannot give them money, Zawadi. That's the rule. The cult will know if you break it, and you will lose everything. Zawadi paced the floor her mind a storm of guilt and confusion. How could she possibly turn her back on her own mother? The weight of the rule pressed down on her, suffocating her in the gilded cage she had created for herself. She reached for her phone again, her fingers trembling as she considered sending the money just this once. 
just as she was about to transfer the money, Jira's voice rang out sharply from behind her. Zawadi, stop! Jira stood in the doorway, her eyes cold and piercing. You know what will happen if you do this. They are always watching. One mistake and everything you've worked for will be gone. Zawadi felt a lamp rise in her throat. Tears welled up in her eyes as she turned to face Jira. But it's my mother, Jira. She's sick. I can't just sit here and do nothing. Jira walked over to her, placing a firm hand on her shoulder. You knew what you were signing up for. When you joined, wealth comes with a price, and this is yours. You can't help them. Not now. Not ever. Zawadi collapsed into a chair, burying her face in her hands. The weight of her choices, pressing down on her with unbearable force. She had all the wealth in the world, yet she couldn't save her own mother. The realization crushed her. Jera sat down next to her, her voice softer now. My friend, I understand how hard this is, but you have to let go. If you break the rules, you lose everything, and you might even die in the process. And for what? Your mother's sickness is beyond your control. You need to focus on the life you've built. But Zawadi's heart refused to let go. Her mother's tired face flashed before her eyes. The woman who raised her, who believed in her dreams, who had sacrificed everything for her future. How could she sit idly by while her mother suffered? That night, Zawadi lay in her bed, staring at the ceiling, unable to sleep. Every time she closed her eyes, she saw her mother's frail body lying on the hospital bed, helpless and alone. The thought crushed her soul, and the world that surrounded her felt emptier than ever before. Days passed, and Zawadi received no updates from her sister. The silence was deafening. She tried to distract herself with the lavish comforts of her life, but nothing could ease the growing dread that consumed her. One evening, Zawadi finally broke down. She grabbed her phone and called Amani, desperate for news. Amani, how's mama? Did you manage to take her to the hospital? Zawadi's voice was filled with anxiety. There was a long pause on the other end before Amani's soft voice responded. We had to take her to a nearby clinic, Zawadi. We didn't have enough money for the hospital, but she's resting now. The doctor said she'll need proper treatment though, or she won't get better. Zawadi's heart shattered. Her mother was still suffering and she could do nothing. Thank you, Amani, Zawadi whispered, her voice breaking. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'll try to come and visit soon. After hanging up, Zawadi stared at her phone, tears streaming down her face. She had traded her soul for wealth, but what good was it if she couldn't even save the people she loved? What kind of life was this? The next morning, Zawadi made a decision. She knew the consequences would be severe, but she could no longer live with the weight of her choices. She packed a small bag, took out a huge amount of money, and headed to the village. Her heart raced with fear, but for the first time in years, she felt a glimmer of freedom. When she arrived at her family's small home, her mother was lying in bed, weak and frail. Zawadi knelt beside her, tears falling freely now. She handed Amani the money and whispered, Let's take her to the best hospital. Don't worry about anything. Her mother, half-conscious, reached out and held Zawadi's hand. 
faint smile on her lips. Zawadi knew what she had done would cost her everything. But at that moment, nothing else mattered more than the love she had for her family. As she sat by her mother's side, Zawadi felt a sense of both fear and peace wash over her. The peace came from knowing she had finally chosen her family over wealth. But the fear gnawed at her, whispering that she would face severe consequences for breaking the cult's rule. She had defied them, and they would surely know. Every ticking second felt heavy with dread. Yet, Zawadi held tightly to her mother's frail hand, praying silently for her recovery. As Zawadi gazed at her mother's face, her vision began to blur, and a sudden chill filled the air. A strange, overwhelming darkness seemed to creep into the room, and Zawadi's heart began to race. She felt a sharp, stabbing pain in her chest as though an unseen force was crushing her from within. Suddenly, Zawadi gasped for air. Her body trembled violently. And before she could even call out, she felt a searing heat radiate through her limbs. Her vision darkened and her breath became ragged as an invisible force yanked her from the chair, throwing her violently to the floor. She screamed in agony as the spiritual attack from the cult began, her body writhing as if trapped in the clutches of some unseen malevolent power. Her mother, too weak to move, could only watch in horror as Zawadi convulsed on the ground. Amani, who had been in the next room, rushed in, panic in her eyes. Zawadi, she cried dropping to her knees beside her sister. But she could do nothing. It was as though an invisible wall separated them, preventing her from even touching Zawadi's trembling body. As Zawadi lay on the cold floor, her mind filled with terrifying visions, dark figures closing in on her, voices chanting in foreign tongues, the cult's leader staring down at her with piercing eyes. Her lips curled into a sinister smile. Zawadi's heart pounded as she realized that the cult was punishing her for breaking the sacred rule. The spiritual attack was far worse than anything she had imagined. Just when it seemed that the darkness would consume her completely, the door to the small room creaked open. In walked a pastor, a humble man named Pastor Ezekiel who was doing his rounds at the hospital, visiting patients and offering prayers. As soon as he entered the room, he felt the oppressive heaviness in the air and saw Zawadi writhing on the floor. Pastor Ezekiel knew immediately that this was no ordinary medical emergency. It was a spiritual attack. Without hesitation, he knelt beside Zawadi and began to pray his voice filled with authority and conviction. In the name of Jesus, I command every dark spirit tormenting this child of God to live at once. His voice echoed in the room as he placed his hands on Zawadi's trembling body, speaking words of faith and deliverance. Zawadi's convulsions grew more intense as the battle raged with her. Her cries filled the room and the dark force seemed to fight back, resisting Pastor Ezekiel's prayers, but he did not waver. He prayed louder, calling on the power of God to intervene. Zawadi, hold on to faith, Pastor Ezekiel shouted, as beads of sweat formed on his forehead. No evil can claim you, for you belong to the Lord. A sudden wind swept through the room, knocking over a chair and rattling the windows. Zawadi's body jerked one last time, and then in an instant, she went still. The oppressive weight in the room lifted, and the dark presence seemed to vanish, as if it had been driven out by a powerful unseen force. Zawadi's eyes fluttered open, her body drenched in sweat, but the pain was gone. Her breathing steady, and the terrible visions 
faded from her mind. Slowly, she sat up. Pastor Ezekiel looked down at her, his face calm but firm. You've been under attack, my child, he said softly. But the Lord has delivered you. Zawadi blinked, still trying to comprehend what had just happened. She felt weak but safe, as though she had been pulled back from the brink of destruction. Tears streamed down her face as she whispered, Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor Ezekiel smiled gently, helping her to her feet. No need to thank me, he said. Thank the Lord, for he watches over those who seek him. But Zawadi, you must know this. Whatever path you've been walking, it's very dangerous. You need to turn away from it completely. Zawadi's heart sank as the weight of his words settled in. She knew what he meant. The cult. The wealth. The sacrifices. She had made a deal with the devil. And now she had to escape it for good. Pastor Ezekiel could see the turmoil in her eyes. The Lord is merciful, Zawadi. No matter what you've done, he can redeem you. But you must cut ties with the evil that has bound you. Zawadi nodded. Her voice barely a whisper. I will. I promise. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to support our channel. Like, comment, and share. Bye.